Bruce Lee is one of the most respected icons among martial artists, strength athletes and beyond. During his lifetime, Bruce Lee's unparalleled commitment to his training made him a true specimen of an athlete and a fighter. Thus, over the course of many articles and videos on this site, I have explored the methods he used to train. Those have been some of the most popular videos on this channel by far, and so in celebration of this 100,000 subscriber milestone, I thought it made sense to return to this subject once again. In this video I want to do something a little different and tie everything we've looked at in the past into a single, modern and accomplishable routine that anyone can follow. Bruce was extremely ahead of his time, but with today's knowledge, how might he train differently? And next week, in order to cover the martial arts training aspect of this program, I'm going to be handing you over to someone who's far more of an expert on that topic than me, the excellent Grant Stevens. Bruce Lee did a lot of heavy bag work, and during this he would divide his training based on types of strikes, pretty much like a bodybuilding split. He had days where he'd practice his kicks, and days where he would practice his punches. Bruce Lee followed a weightlifting program that consisted primarily of compound lifts. These were relatively light and targeted the entire body for each workout. I've covered these in full in previous videos. The weights he used weren't extremely heavy, and he also added in some accessory movements like curls and good mornings. He's also reported to have experimented with a range of alternative training methods. At certain points during his career, Bruce Lee was known to run every single day. At other times, he is reported to have run four miles three times a week. This was performed in a fartlek manner, meaning that he would alternate between different speeds. Finally, Bruce Lee trained flexibility, and you can see his impressive free range of movement in a number of his films. Simple though some of this might look, consider now how many aspects there are to his training. The other issue is that we don't have a single resource that tells us how to incorporate all these different facets into a single program, and there are simply more options today that I think Bruce Lee would have considered for his own training. Without dedicating your entire life to training like he did, you aren't likely to get quite to Bruce's standards, but we can certainly head in that direction in a smart and methodical manner. For strength training, I'm going to schedule three full body routines. One of these will consist of lifting somewhat heavy using compound movements, one will involve training with calisthenics, and the last will be comprised of accessory movements, devised to develop a more well-rounded physique. We're going to try and tie all of this into one seamless program. To begin with, we have our first full body day consisting of compound lifts and movements. So what's going on here? Well, to start with, we have our overcoming isometric moves. That means setting up a weight so it won't move, and then attempting to pull, push, or squat it using maximum force and exploding into it. This trains the muscle fiber recruitment and is one of the best tricks used by old time strongmen and Bruce Lee himself. As far as your body is concerned, you're trying to lift more than your one rep max, and this forces strength developing adaptations. Use three joint angles for each movement and hold each repetition for six seconds. You'll only need a 20 second rest between each set, and for more on why you should set it up like this, check out my dedicated videos on isometrics. Then we move more into the bulk of the workout, which is using a number of compound lifts at 70% one rep max. This is truer to Bruce Lee's original training than if we were to use the deadlift, squat and bench press and higher weights. Using this slightly lighter weight allows us to train for explosiveness rather than max strength and size. When training these movements, the aim is to accelerate as much as possible during the concentric phase. This is the compensatory acceleration or dynamic effort method that we discussed in the previous video on strength training. It's also the perfect analogue for Bruce's own speed lifting technique. In short, when you try and move as quickly as possible through these movements, you train your explosiveness and starting strength through neural adaptations and type 2B muscle fibre development. You practice generating force quickly, which alters your rate coding. The result has obvious benefits for martial artists. Not only can you punch faster and harder, but when grappling, it'll be the athlete capable of generating the most power the most quickly who can throw the opponent off balance. Bruce Lee was known to use speed training, where he'd try and complete workouts as quickly as possible, and this is likely why. Remember, he was all about those moments of truly explosive power, of having that strength accessible at all times. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. And that's what we're looking to train here. We're ending with kettlebell swings, which nicely develop the posterior chain further, great after those squats, and offer an awesome form of resistance cardio, HIIT. So the calisthenics day looks like this. I absolutely think that if Bruce Lee was around today, he would have been hopping on the gymnastic strength training bandwagon. Heck, he probably would have been the one to get it trending. This type of strength covers everything that Bruce was interested in, building true core stability, mobility, and functional power. I also believe that calisthenics in general offers one of the best options for someone who wants a physique like Bruce Lee's without necessarily training exactly like him. Working with your own body weight will help to develop lean, hard muscle 
while at the same time giving you the kind of relative strength that Bruce excelled at and the same kind of body control. When you perform planche, for instance, you're trained to keep your entire body rigid and to develop the kind of invincible core that will ensure you can take blows to the stomach, deliver more powerful blows and never get knocked over. So for the first portion of this workout, you'll be practicing holding planche and front lever progressions for up to a minute, twice for each movement. So if you can't do planche for a minute yet, then you'll start with the crow pose and hold that for as much of a minute as possible. If you have to take a rest, that's fine. Then jump back into it until the minute is over. Once you can hold each one for a minute, all the way through, you can increase the difficulty by using tuck planche or full planche, for example, just working through those progressions. The next portion will be a rather explosive full body routine with lots of plyometrics. Once you can perform each movement for the full number of reps, add some extra weight with a weighted vest. The last part of this workout is a small circuit completed for speed, consisting of pull-ups, press-ups, and jump squats. This will make you explosive, fast, and endurant, teaching you to develop that kind of power for long periods of time. It's also fantastic metabolic conditioning. And finally, the accessory day looks like this. The cable punches and single arm overhead press will help to develop that core strength, the obliques, and torque. Training in the transverse plane like this is an overlooked aspect of strength training in many programs. This is also perfect for adding power to punches, and we're targeting things like wrist strength, finger strength, and knuckle conditioning as well, all things that Bruce Lee was known to have done and which will make you a better fighter. At the same time, this workout is devised to include all of those smaller muscle groups that might otherwise have been overlooked. We've got the Spider-Man crawls to develop our contralateral strength and our body awareness. And the pike pulses and downward dog push-ups will really help to develop further mobility on top of any extra mobility you're doing. Final cardio finisher here is using battle ropes, which I think Bruce would probably have liked a lot. These are ideal resistance cardio, letting you burn fat, improve endurance, all without cannibalizing muscle. And now onto cardio. So Bruce's experimentations with concepts like fartlek paint him as clearly ahead of his time. This is a form of high intensity interval training that would allow him to increase his aerobic capacity, mitochondrial density, VO2 max, fat burning, all in less time than typical steady state cardio. It follows that we're going to include something similar in our own regime, which will fuel short bursts of high intensity anaerobic activity. So obviously that's why I've built in the finishes into the program, such as the kettlebell swings and the battle ropes. Of course, when doing HIIT, you're basically going all out for a little while and then resting for a little while and then resuming. You can start by going all out for 30 seconds and resting for a minute and then as you improve you're going to switch that over so that you're going all out for a minute and resting for 30 seconds for example. Bruce Lee would also experiment with running with resistance and pushing his anaerobic threshold with tempo runs. I recommend that you attempt a threshold run, a tempo run, once every two to four months. So a threshold run is a run that you perform whilst attempting to cover the most distance possible in a given amount of time, normally about 30 minutes. This isn't sprinting but it isn't jogging. It's just going all out as best you can with an eye to continuous exertion for 30 minutes. But what's also notable is that Bruce Lee practiced large amounts of low intensity steady state cardio. That is to say that he would go for long jogs at roughly 70% of his max heart rate. This is important for any fighter intending on going more than one round. Or to paraphrase Bruce himself, if you don't have a good cardiovascular system, you need to look into a more peaceful hobby. Indeed, adaptations occur at this intensity that you can't accomplish with HIIT training alone. For example, steady state cardio will increase the size of the left ventricle of the heart, increasing stroke volume and lowering resting heart rate. That's why we're going to include one to two steady state cardio runs per week, depending on what you can manage to fit in. Thanks a ton for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please leave a like, share it around. That helps me out immensely. If you enjoy programs like this, functional training, then check out the link in the description down below and you can find my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. In the description you'll also find a link to the website where you'll find the full article that goes with this video including the full programs. Stay tuned for next week of course for part two with Grant. Hit subscribe if you want to see more like this. Thanks a ton for watching this one and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.